series on Revelation. We've already talked about the rapture, the events of the midpoint of the tribulation period, the resurrection, those being brought that were left behind and weren't ready. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. For the dead in Christ shall rise first. Afterwards, we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. Then the end of the tribulation period, when Christ comes back, we talked about last week, the return of Christ and how he sets up his kingdom here on the earth for a thousand years. At the end of that thousand years, then comes once again a period of judgment, because remember that's how each age ends. And so that sixth age ends in the great white throne judgment. But what happens then? What comes then? We've had all sorts of ideas and theories that we've seen in fiction, you know. Well, nuclear annihilation, no. Star Trek, no. <laughs> what happens is, everything is made new. New heavens, new earth. It's spoken of in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. And I was concerned about it because when it was saying new, I'm thinking, oh, wait a minute, I see scriptures, especially in the Psalms, that talks about how the earth and the heavens were created by God and will remain forever. And I'm thinking, new heavens and new earth? So what I did was I did some research on it, and what I found out is that the word new in both the Hebrew of the Old Testament and the Greek of the New Testament, the same, doesn't mean replaced. It means refurbished. It means taken down to nothing and then brought back again. Okay, so it's the same heavens, same earth, only it's going to be refurbished. And we're looking at Revelation today, chapter 21. And remember, John is being shown the future. And he says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there is no longer any sea. Oh, no more ocean? No. Did you know that the seas of the world occupy almost two-thirds of the surface area of the earth? And so, when there's no more sea, it doesn't mean there's no more water. It means that the land area of the world is increased by about 75-80%. You, you, you've got half again, almost twice as much land mass as you have now, okay? And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. Now, here's what we have to understand about this. Back in the book of Galatians, chapter 3, the scripture describes the new Jerusalem, the Jerusalem that's in heaven. Okay, we've got a Jerusalem here, and there's another Jerusalem, a new Jerusalem, that's there. And the book of Galatians explains that the Jerusalem that is here is representative of the old covenant, the covenant of the law, and that that's the place that it occupies, but that the new Jerusalem is representative of the new covenant, and in fact, in the book of Galatians, it says that it is the mother of us all. Sure, the new covenant. The mother, when we're born again, we are born again of that new covenant. 
And so it only makes sense that this is the bride of Christ. This is the joining of the Messiah and the new covenant, just as when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. Once again, it was a joining of the new covenant and of the Messiah, of those prophecies being brought together. Only now it's being brought together in a very special and a very dynamic way. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God, the dwelling place of God, is above men, and he will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no longer be any death. Okay. There will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write, for these words are faithful and true. And then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega. That's, that's the first letter of the Greek alphabet and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. It's like he's saying, it's all done A to Z. It's finished. Okay? I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to the one who thirsts from the spring of the water of life without cost. He who overcomes will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But for the cowardly and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and immoral persons and sorcerers and all liars, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, one of the angels who had the seven last plagues then comes to John, gives him a tour, if you will, of the New Jerusalem. Its details, its size, its shape. Do you know that it's a hundred, pardon me, fifteen hundred miles on each side is square? And each side is fifteen hundred miles. A long way. It's a big city. And he gives him a tour of it. And then we get down to chapter 22. And here's where we start to see something that's puzzling for us. Then he showed me a river of the water of life, clear as crystal, coming from the throne of God and of the Lamb in the middle of the street on either side of the river was the tree of life bearing 12 kinds of fruit yielding its fruit every month so the tree of life yields fruit a different fruit every month of the year yielding its fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations no more sorrow, no more tears, no more death. How many of you thought that all of the residents of the new heaven and the new earth were going to be resurrected people? Were going to be those that had already been resurrected? The scripture says no. <laughs> The scripture tells us that there are going to be mortal people on the earth living in that new heaven and new earth. Turn with me, please, to, well, let's, let, let's go first over to Ezekiel 47. Ezekiel 47, 12. Mm -hmm. 
by the river on its bank, on one side and on the other, will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fail. They will bear every month because their water flows from the sanctuary, from the throne of God, and their fruit will be for food and their leaves for healing. Their leaves for healing. Over to Isaiah, chapter 65. I'm going to show you something. Okay, this is a this is a fasten your seatbelt. You ready? Isaiah chapter 65, beginning with verse 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things will not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem for rejoicing and her people for gladness. I will also rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. There will no longer be heard in her the voice of weeping and the sound of crying. Okay. What is death? What is, what, what, in, in this world that we live in, you see, death didn't come along until Adam and Eve sinned. <coughs> and after they sinned, what, what did God say about it? In the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Okay. And it was after that, that God described the death that would come to them, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust mortality. And we know that in this present world in which we live, when someone dies, they're gone. They're gone. The body is buried or cremated, and that person is gone. That's death. But the scripture says that in this place, there will be no more death. Watch carefully. No longer, I'm in verse 20, no longer will there be in it an infant who lives with a few days. For an old man, or an old man who does not live out his days, for the youth will die at the age of 100. And the one who does not reach the age of 100 will be thought a curse. They will build houses and inhabit them. They will also plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They will not build and another inhabit. They will not plant and another eat. For as the lifetime of a tree, so will be the days of my people and my chosen ones will wear out the work of their hands. Wait a minute, now he's, he's talking about new heavens and a new earth. And he's talking about people. How long does a tree live? Seven, eight, nine hundred years? Well, remember Genesis? When people were living? Seven, eight, nine hundred years? You're saying that's what it's going to be like in this kingdom age. But besides the resurrected people, there's going to be normal, natural, mortal people living on the earth in that kingdom age. They will still be here. They will still be having babies. They will still be growing up. Watch. Whereas the lifetime of a tree, so will be the days of my people. And my chosen ones will wear out the work of their hands. They will not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they are the offspring of those blessed by the Lord and their descendants with them. It will also come to pass that before they call, I will answer 
and while they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will graze together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. They will do no evil or harm in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. So, so what happens when that seven, eight, nine hundred years is over? No more death. I think of it more as like graduation day. <laughs> you know, they go from being mortal to immortal. They go from being the normal people that we think of, and they become the resurrected ones in the same day. They're not lost. They're not gone. Yay, they're still with us. They're just resurrected now. No more death. No more death. So, you may wonder about this. You may say, wait a minute, it's not quite what I thought it was going to be. But yet, the Lord always has something wonderful in store for us. The Lord always has something new in store for us. He's God. He doesn't run out of ideas. <laughs> He doesn't run out of joy and peace. He doesn't run out of anything. He has prepared a future for this world and a future for humanity that is beyond anything we can imagine. It is God creating the future for us. Praise the Lord. Musicians.
announcement today. Today is the last Sunday of August. When Pastor Fred retired, he retired on the last Sunday of August, 2022. This is the last Sunday of August, 2024. So officially, as of today, I've been with Pastor for two years. Um, I'm going to be taking a little time off. Uh, Pastor Lynn is going to be preparing a series of messages for the month of September. And I'm going to be, Lord willing, continuing to teach the Wednesday night class. We're going to be in the book of Hebrews. And uh, I'm going to be using the extra time and effort to try to finish my book. Because I'm, I'm almost done with, with my fifth book. Uh, it's called Bible Mysteries. And uh, I'm, I'm getting there, I'm almost there. Heavenly Father, this day, Lord, we praise you and thank you that you have not left us ignorant of what is coming ahead for humanity, but you have told us, Lord, you've given us your word, and your word is always good. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you.